Hello guys and welcome back to Excel State Academy. So till now in the active solute transport, we have discussed the various types of transporters, right? Now we are going to discuss something about the pore forming toxins. So these toxins are the ones which is actually responsible. For example, we have heard about cholera toxins. We have heard about the anthracic uh, toxins, right? So how these bacteria are actually affecting us? And again, it is all totally dependent on these transporters only. At the end, kya hai? they are the transporters which is helping in the, uh, you know, so for, for bacteria, it is their survival mode. Then how are we going to uh, overcome this problem? This is what we are going to discuss in this session. Okay. Now, if you see this example, the figure which is shown uh, just over here, you can see that beautifully like a flower like arrangement it is given correct and it makes a proper pore over here at the center as you can see in this case see all these proteins are there right but eventually they come together in the transmembrane region they are making like a channel through which it is easy for the molecules or the cytoplasmic molecules to be leaked out Correct. Now here different types are there and it is all important for you guys to understand and remember. Okay. For example, bacteria like Clostridium and Staphylococcus produce proteotoxins that make numerous unregulated pores in the membrane of the target cells to kill them. So, yani ki kya? These are the bacteria which release this toxin. And again, what are these toxins? They are nothing but proteins only. What is the chemistry behind? They are the proteins only. Now, there are different types of pore forming toxins. Okay, PFT means pore forming toxins. For example, alpha pore forming toxins, example is cytolysin. Okay, beta pore forming toxins, hemolysin is there. Another example is Panton, Valentin, Leucocidin. Is me sab ye yaad raklo, because ye hamesha pucha hai. Then binary toxins, anthrax toxin, edema toxin, cholesterol dependent cytolysin. So this is again, when you say cholesterol dependent, you can talk about here the lipid rafts, if you remember, right? So there the concentration of cholesterol is more. So then these uh, toxins, the cytolysins are totally dependent on the cholesterol. So example is nemolysin. Small pore forming toxins, they are example is gramicidin A. So in this session, all these different types of the pore forming toxins we are going to discuss. Okay. This is something you have to remember. Now, each example we will be discussing in detail. Okay. Now, alpha pore forming toxin example is cytolysin. So, uh, organism kya tha is mein aapka? E. coli. So, yaha pe aap si question poos sakte hai, like we have asked in the interviews also, ki E. coli to bohati general bacteria ho gaya. Correct? It is present in as part of your gut bacteria also. Okay. Then, how come it is not affecting uh, the, uh, or how come it is not affecting the human cells? Iska kya answer hoga? Aap jo pani pite ho, kabhi kabhi jo bahar ka tap water pite ho, in that also E. coli is present. Yes. Iska kya answer hoga? Uh, maybe the gut is gut is such a place where it can't affect because of all of the other there's a lot of proteolytic activity already in the gut right so because of that no thoda sa or socho but i think you're going correct thoda sa or socho uh maybe uh, the gut is affected but then uh, the cells uh, yeah, replace a lot faster, right? Hmm. In the gut. Hmm. Okay. Not exactly. See, then if these bacteria, okay, which are producing alpha pore forming toxins and all, the thing is, first of all, we have this brushing away activity of our cilia, which is present in the intestine. That you remove E. coli, you don't allow the bacteria to get settled in the gut. And even if you have this thing, we, as you said, as you said, we have become resistant to that. Plus, 
the e coli which releases these toxins okay they are like uh, what to say a group of those bacteria which uh, of course you are not going to drink the bad water kitna bhi ganda dikhega even if you are so thirsty you are not going to drink unless until you see that it is plain water it looks clean bisleri bottle mein hai but you don't know that usme e coli hai ya nahi hai theek hai so we have got different strains of e coli so each uh, strain has got difference in their toxin production and har e coli aapka toxin produce bhi nahi karta hai so the water which we take or what we what it is present in our gut those are not the ones which is going to produce the toxin samjha kya maine thoda complicate kar diya let me say it again it's just the e coli e coli mein ye aapka species ho gaya e coli mein you have got thousands of strains ओके okay? ये समझ रहा है स्पीशीज एंड स्ट्रेन का अंतर आर यू गाइस फेमिलियर विद दैट एट लीस्ट इतना अंतर आपको पता चल रहा है राइट ओके ओके सो फॉर एग्जांपल मैं आपको एक एग्जांपल दे सकती हूँ दैट इफ आई हैव पैथोजेनिक and non pathogenic okay let it make it more clear for everyone so these are the two categories of organisms theek okay? hai patho type bolte hain hum isko aapne micro mein i don't know whether it has been taken or not so we say it as patho type patho type means whether for example e coli is pathogenic or non pathogenic theek okay? hai now under pathogenic we have got many strains for example Uh, we say enteropathogenic e coli strain is 126 nm ye aapka strain number ho gaya species kya hua aapka e coli theek hai strain ho gaya aapka 0126 jo bhi number ho gaya similarly we have got another species like 157 ho gaya ya 1493 ho gaye so these are the different strain number of e coli which are pathogenic okay Now coming to the non-pathogenic. So non-pathogenic E. coli is also present. For example, strain name is K12. So if you have this present, hai, so it's okay. These are present in your gut. So they are not going to produce the toxins. Okay. Pathogenic E. coli are going to produce the toxins. Now, have you understood? So cytolysin, which I have said, it is a species E. coli. But which strain it is going to produce? I have not mentioned it. so what we need to understand is that e coli species may there are certain strains which are pathogenic those pathogenicity is coming from the ability to produce the alpha pore forming toxins ab samjha yes ma'am ha huh? clear clear to everyone yes ma'am okay cool ओके सो दिस इज हाउ द कैटेगरीज आर गिवन ठीक है ऐसा नहीं कि हर इकोलाई खराब है यू जस्ट हैव गॉट पैथोजेनिक एंड नॉन पैथोजेनिक ओके तो देन सिमिलर फॉर दी अदर केसेस आल्सो निमोनिया एंड ये सब ठीक है ओके लेट्स प्रोसीड नाउ नाउ वी हैव गॉट दी अल्फा पोर फॉर्मिंग टॉक्सिन साइटोलाइसिन इज देयर ओके नाउ इन दिस केस ओके इन द केस ऑफ दिस साइटोलाइसिन लेट्स स्टार्ट ओके so first you have got the inactive subunits ll ls okay now before we proceed over here ye aapko kahan se aa raha hai theek hai here the genes are getting expressed so these are the genes which is getting expressed for example mbai okay now when these genes are getting expressed what is happening ये जो मेम्ब्रेन बनाया है ये आपका बैक्टीरिया है इकोलाई का बैक्टीरिया है ठीक है सॉरी इकोलाई का मेम्ब्रेन है नाउ इकोलाई अंडरस्टैंड्स दैट देयर इज अ ह्यूमन सेल ओके ह्यूमन टारगेट सेल इज देयर आई नीड टू प्रोड्यूस साइटोलाइसिन ओके नाउ साइटोलाइसिन इज कंपोज्ड ऑफ टू सब यूनिट्स एल एंड स्मॉल दैट इज लार्ज एंड स्मॉल ठीक है 
Now, when R is for the regulation, okay, when it is required or not required. So, what is happening? So, your small, large subunit and small subunit gets activated. So, those are produced, okay. Now, M is required. It is those enzymes which is required for the post-translation modification on these subunits, correct? For example, it can be if you see in the structure, it can be change in the secondary structure or it can be making like from, uh, what do you say, the from inactive form to active form by uh, degrading the starting of the peptide, which are like signals only, correct? If this uh, polypeptide chain is starting make signal. Hai. So there are certain enzymes which actually remove this signal and allow them to get modified into their respective secondary or tertiary structure. Okay, this is what that is what is meant over here. So you have got the cytolysine precursor subunits, large and small. Then this M, it is releasing certain enzymes which is going to do post-translation modification on them, resulting into the formation of modified subunits. Now these modified subunits, they have got this signal, uh, which through B, okay, through B. So B, what is your transporter? Okay, B upper transporter, okay, which is coded by this particular gene. So it will help in the transport of the subunits large and small outside. Obviously, right? E. coli kaise act karega, jab wo toxin bahar produce karega. Now they go outside. So your inactive subunits, large and small, are now secreted out. Correct? Now you have got the another enzyme. So these is proteases. Proteases kya karenge? They are gonna chop off these inactive subunits, converting them from inactive into active subunits. So you can see this is doing the activation. So again, there's a certain changes in the structure and you get the active toxin subunits. So once they become active, the small and the large subunits come together and then they get integrated into the membrane of your human or the target cell. Now, when this integrate, ho jayega, toh what will happen? All the cytoplasmic content of the human cell will come out. Okay? This is how alpha pore forming cytolysin is functioning. So, this is the mechanism. Okay. Any doubts, guys? Or do you want me to repeat again? Ma'am, uh, which channel does the protease use to come out of the E. coli cell? This one, the protease you are asking, this yes, one. Yes. See, again, for each particular component of your cytoplasmic proteins, if it is supposed to be secreted out, it gets a, uh, it gets a signal. Okay? Take a second. Huh? So this again, uh, once we complete the transport, uh, membrane transport, then next topic is this only, like how one particular protein is targeted for the extracellular release or it is meant for the intracellular integration. Like if it is bound in the membrane or in the mitochondria, how does it decide how a cell decide? Karta hai, hai? Now, just for example, over here, if you talk about this particular protease, so it will have a signal for the release outside of the membrane. Thik hai? So, let us say that this is a protease and here the signal is present. Okay, so there are certain transporters like B, which actually remove the signal. So, you have got the signal peptidase. Okay, so this signal will be removed. This peptidase, this peptide, okay, the signal will be removed. This particular enzyme will be then transported out. And for them, there are two ways mechanisms are there. Either they will have the transporter or if it is in bulk, then they will be exocytos. So the process of exocytosis. Clear, Shruti? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else do you want to ask? Anyone else? This entire mechanism. You need to understand then when there is a regulation. Okay. Regulation matlab kya hua aapka? Agar aapke paas target cell nahi hai, then there is no need of required of, or there is no requirement of having these large subunit and uh, small subunit cytoly cytolysin to be produced. So yaha pe wo band ho jayega. Now when you see Dushman samne hai, human target cell is hai. So it says that I need the expression of these particular genes. Correct. 
एम चाहिए मुझे मॉडिफिकेशन के लिए बी चाहिए मुझे ट्रांसपोर्टर के लिए ए मुझे चाहिए प्रोटीन एक्टिविटी के लिए आई क्या है आपका इंड्यूसर होगा सॉरी इम्यूनिटी वाई इम्यूनिटी ये आके मेरे ही मेम्ब्रेन में आके अटैक ना करे नहीं तो फिर मेरा कंटेंट चला जाएगा इफ आई एम द इक्वल आई सो दिस इज प्रोटेक्टिंग इट सेल्फ फ्रॉम इट्स ओन अटैक समझा दिस इज लाइक ए शील्ड वन मोर थिंग मैम हाउ डज इट रेकग्नाइज दैट देर आर ह्यूमन सेल्स नियर बाय ha huh. so there comes again your cell signaling so it understands if you remember uh, we have talked about in the rbc there are certain lipid drafts are there these lipid drafts have got certain integral proteins which is acting as a receptors right so these receptors means what aise kuch sugar molecules rehte hain correct so these sugar molecules are interacted with the bacteria जब वो बैक्टीरिया को समझता है देन दे अंडरस्टैंड दैट ये पर्टिकुलर ह्यूमन सेल है या यूकेरियोटिक सेल है लेट अस अटैक देम बिकॉज़ दीस वोंट बी प्रेजेंट ऑन द नेक्स्ट इकोलाई जो उसके बाजू में होगा सो इट अंडर सेंसर ही अपना ही भाई है सो दे डोंट अटैक ऑन द इकोलाई नेक्स्ट टू इट समझा लाइक फॉर एग्जांपल ह्यूमंस वी सी राइट वी सी डायरेक्टली एंड अंडरस्टैंड ये ह्यूमन है या ये एनिमल है राइट right? In the case of E. coli, it is the receptor ligand interactions which gives them the signal. Okay, ये हमारा receptor नहीं है, ये human का है. This is my target. I I should attack. Otherwise, they are gonna attack me. See, अगर वो macrophage होता है या कुछ और होता, it is going to engulf the bacteria. उससे पहले bacteria को counter attack में क्या करना होगा? They should start releasing the cytolysin to protect themselves. Correct? मॉडल फॉर द एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ दाइटोलाइसिन फ्रॉम दिकालिस The toxin subunits, large and small, are ribosomally synthesized in the precursor form. Then are post translation modified by the m which introduces modification characteristics of the antibiotic class of bacteriocins okay the modified peptides are then further processed and secreted by b which serves as both atp binding cassette transporter and a signal peptidase okay so here you got the point see abhi we have recently talked about how abc are working so here your b is acting as a abc transporter plus signal peptidase iska kya matlab hua jaise hi yahan pe b hai okay your abc uh, transporter is there the moment those uh, small and large subunits were coming Whatever the signal they had, because ये आपको बाहर pump out करना है, बाहर extra cellular release करना है, right? So those signal will be removed. So that will be also that also will be done by the B. Okay? The matured externalized peptide subunits L and S undergo activation by A, the proteolytic cleavage, which removes the identical six amino acid residues from the N terminus of E subunit and generates the active toxin. Now I confers self immunity from the bactericidal action of the cytolysin then it the expression is regulated by r1 and r2 okay the same thing what we have just discussed now is written here okay now coming to the beta pore forming toxins so abhi jo humne discuss kiya tha wo aapka alpha tha theek hai now why alpha because if you see the structure wo alpha helical rahega theek hai यहाँ पे आपके बीटा पोर्स आ रहे हैं बीटा स्ट्रैंड्स आ रहे हैं सो बीटा पोर फॉर्मिंग टॉक्सिन आर डाइमोर्फिक प्रोटीन मोस्टली मेड अप ऑफ बीटा स्ट्रैंड बेस्ड मीन दैट आर सोलबल मोनोमस एंड असेंबल टू फॉर्म द पोर अभी क्या बोल रहे हैं ये लोग दैट इट इज अलबल एंड इट इज अ मोनोमर तो यानी कि वंस इट इज रिक्वायर्ड देन ओनली दे असेंबल टू फॉर्म द पोर ओके these pores disrupts the regulated gradient of ions and small molecules of cytoplasm allowing continuous outflow along with the nucleotides in amino acids so what they are saying is that 
एक बार आपका यहाँ पे ये पोर बन गया तो साइटोप्लास्मिक आयोन्स विल गो आउट साइटोप्लास्मिक न्यूक्लियोटाइड विल बी थ्रोन आउट जिसकी वजह से क्या होगा द सेल विल बी डिहाइड्रेटेड द सेल विल नॉट हैव इट्स न्यूट्रिशन एंड इट इज गोना डाई it also facilitates excess diffusion of water into the cell that leads blebbing or swelling which results in the cell death so either way round okay so here it is wow aise dekhte hi lagta hoga na ki kya hai ye cheez but those all are very interesting guys okay can you see pft pore forming toxin so they are fuzzy insoluble ones right so they are the uh, so not insoluble they are the uh, inactive soluble uh, pft right chote chote se hai now they get the receptor or the lipid jo yahan pe bhi aapka lipid raft hoga okay they come and they bind to that now once they bind once they bind what is happening so these inactive pfts are secreted by your organisms theek hai they come and interact with the lipid rafts containing receptors of your host cell ye aapka host ka hai membrane uske protein receptor pe aapka ye inactive soluble pft bind hota hai single single later later what happens is that they come together okay and then they get inserted into the membrane can you see they are getting inserted into the membrane so what is happening the pore is present eventually resulting in the loss of ions loss of amino acids or energy is it clear this diagram should i repeat again tanvi is it clear to you yes ma'am okay cool uh who can explain me then this tanvi would you like to try okay ma'am uh so at first this uh, inactive soluble uh, pft uh comes and bind to the lipid uh, receptor over the host membrane correct and then uh, and then it uh, insert in the membrane and make a hole uh, make a pore structure and uh, therefore the loss of these ions takes place in the yes. host membrane Absolutely correct. Okay. So I hope everyone got Shruti and Akshaya. Is it's clear to you guys also, right? Ma'am, just one more thing. The Haan. pore that is formed that will only release the ions and proteins until the equilibrium is formed, right? No. See, ये cell का नहीं है. ये outsider का है. so it doesn't yeah. have the uh, what to say it doesn't have the responsibility ki equilibrium hi banna chahiye hey, but I mean, as soon as there is more solute outside it will stop right because no, uh, no, see see i agree agar bahar agar aapka wo present hai to obviously plasma membrane is going to act for the osmosis so aapka wo equilibrium reach hona chahiye i agree बट वेन एन ऑर्गेनिज्म इज अटैकिंग ऑन यू क्यों अटैक कर रहा है इक्विबिरियम अचीव करने के लिए नहीं करता है ना इट इज गोइंग टू यूज ऑल योर आयोन्स ऑल योर एम्यूनो एसिड ऑल द प्रोटीन्स व्हाट इज बीइंग रिलीज फ्रॉम द साइटोप्लाज्म ओके ओके है ना सो हां सो व्हाट हैपेंस इज दैट द ऑर्गेनिज्म आउटसाइड विल यूज अप योर प्रोटीन सो दैट इट नेवर रीचेस इक्विबिरियम करेक्ट करेक्ट ओके अब देखो अब मैं एक और चीज में बताती हूं गुड यू आस्क दिस क्वेश्चन uh this is your host cell and these are the bacteria theek hai so when they attack it's not that only ek e coli ek pore release kar raha hai so one e coli will be releasing so many molecules of the toxin another e coli is there it is also releasing so many molecules of toxin jab ek sath itne sare toxin attack karte hain then the host cell is uh, they start losing the cytoplasmic content and all these bacteria which are present okay because of the chemotactic uh, activity and all they will come here they will start eating all those things hai na because they are going to divide eventually after 20 40 minutes समझा 
तो यहाँ पे कभी भी इक्विम्बिरम वाली बात नहीं आएगी इट विल बी यूज अप एंड द सेल विल डाई क्लियर गुड ओके एनीथिंग एल्स ओके देन ओके सो नाउ लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट वन सो बाइनरी टॉक्सिन सो वी हैव कवर्ड अल्फा पोर फॉर्मिंग टॉक्सिन एंड बीटा पोर फॉर्मिंग टॉक्सिन नाउ कमिंग टू द बाइनरी टॉक्सिन सो इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ कॉम्पोनेंट ए एंड बी वेर ए इज ए एंजोमेटिक कॉम्पोनेंट एंड बी इज ए मेम्ब्रेन अल्टरिंग कॉम्पोनेंट ओके कॉम्पोनेंट बी इट फॉर्म्स होमो ओलिगोमरिक पोर दैट हेल्प्स इन द एंट्री ऑफ द कॉम्पोनेंट ए इन द साइटोसोल वेर इट इज गोइंग टू इनहेबिट द नॉर्मल सेल प्रोसेस ठीक है एग्जाम्पल हो गया आपका एंथेरेक्स टॉक्सिन तो अभी क्या कर रहे हैं यहाँ पे दो कॉम्पोनेंट हो गए ए क्या करते हैं बी आपको हेल्प करेगा मेम्ब्रेन के अंदर जाने में किसको ए को सो दैट दिस एंजमेटिक कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ द टॉक्सिन इज गो ना स्टॉप दी नॉर्मल सेल प्रोसेस ठीक है ना दिस एंथरेक्स टॉक्सिन दिस इज रियली वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एंड इंपॉर्टेंट ओके सो एंथरेक्स टॉक्सिन so it has got the uh, it is also known as the exotoxin it is secreted by virulent strains of the uh, bacterium called bacillus anthracis iske bare mein kahani aapne suna hi hoga right uh, this anthrax jab phaila tha china mein okay so it is composed of three components the cell binding protein which is known as the pa protective antigen guys thoda sa yaad rakho because in the figure it will be helpful then pa is a protective antigen this is going to help in binding of the cell theek okay? hai then there are two enzyme components called edema factor and the lethal factor ef and lf okay so two components hote hain aapke ek membrane binding aur ek enzymatic to so, yahan pe aapka pa kaun se component mein aa raha hai is it a or b A? No, B, B. because B is your membrane binding component. ठीक है? So protective antigen is cell binding protein where A is the enzymatic. So A में आपका आ रहा है edema factor as well as lethal factor. Okay? Now all these three together they are going to come together to have the uh, toxin activity. Okay? Same thing. So they have shown. See, protective antigen. If it is there, it is going to help in binding of the membrane. Correct? Then only the lethal factor will come. Now, suppose lethal factor is coming. It's a lethal toxin. It is going to make sure the organ. Uh, uh, it is going to make sure that the target cell is dead. Okay. Now, with the protective antigen, with the edema factor, again, it is going to make sure it is the the cell, the target cell is going to swell. ये एडिमा टॉक्सिन है राइट इट इज एडिमा रिजल्टिंग इन द एडिमा ऑफ द सेल ओके नाउ अभी आपको इसमें क्या याद रखना है दैट इफ यू डोंट हैव द पीए प्रोटेक्टिव एंटीजन देन द लीथल फैक्टर और द एडिमा फैक्टर कैन नॉट डू एनीथिंग तो इन दोनों के लिए आपको पीए की जरूरत है लीथल फैक्टर इज द एंजाइम एंडोपेप्टिडेज वेयर एज एडिमा फैक्टर इज योर एक्टिवेटिंग एडिनाइलेट साइक्लेज ओके नाउ लेट्स सी द मैकेनिज्म ऑफ ऑल द थ्री a uh, factor coming together so they assemble uh, the complex containing the toxin components are endocytos iska matlab kya ye tino ko host cell jo hai endocytos se andar le leta hai theek hai now this endo endosome so whatever it's form uh, let me just draw for you guys okay this is how uh, sorry yahan pe aapka bind hua these factors so it induces the host cell to form the endosome like this so kya hoga ye component aapka ye cell ke andar aa gaya theek hai so this becomes your endosome okay this is how the toxins are translocated inside of the target cell cytoplasm now once it is in the cytoplasm the enzymatic components of the toxin will disrupts the immune cell function yani ki it is going to disrupt the cellular signaling and the migration so it will make sure that the target cell is not able to give any uh, response 
टू द नेबरिंग सेल ठीक है हेल्प के लिए वो नहीं बुला सकता फिर एंथ्रेसॉक्सिन अलाउज द बैक्टीरिया टू इवेट द इम्यून सिस्टम प्रोलीफेरेट एंड अल्टीमेटली किल द होस्ट एनिमल तो ये तो हमें पता ही है सो इट्स वेरी डेडली ओके ना दिस इज अ मैकेनिज्म so your bacillus anthracis it's uh, like it's a capsule it forms a capsule whenever there is a unfavorable conditions so they release these exotoxins so exotoxins consists of your protective antigen lethal factor and edema factor okay so they all these uh, factors they go and bind to the receptor of your host cell okay and they mention it is the furin okay so they come and bind together you can see that with the help of the pa they come together ओके योर पी ए बाइंड टू द रिसेप्टर ये रिसेप्टर जो है वो आपका होस्ट का है टू दिस दिस लाइट ग्रे क्रीम कलर आपका पी ए है दिस वन ओके दे कम टूगेदर राइट एंड इट मेक श्योर दैट द लीथल फैक्टर एंड द एडिमा फैक्टर आर बाइंडिंग एंड गेटिंग एंडोसाइटोस सो वंस इट इज कमिंग इन साइड ओके वंस इट इज कमिंग इन साइड एडिमा फैक्टर इज गोइंग टू एक्टिवेट और Uh, hyperactivate adenylate cyclase which is which, which will convert atp to cmp resulting in the edema of the cell now if it is a lethal factor it is going to affect the cell signaling pathway of your cell ultimately resulting into the death of the cell is this clear guys the mechanism is clear yes ma'am ha huh? to everyone almost thoda bahut okay abhi kaise hota hai ki how the bacteria and also if you remember there was this case that on the paper theek hai aise paper mein powdered form of bacillus anthracis was taken ये कैसे कैप्सूल ले लेते हैं कैप्सूल फॉर्म ले लेते हैं दीज बैक्टीरिया वेन एवर द कंडीशन आर नॉट फेवरेबल सो इट वॉज पाउडर्ड ओके सो इन द पेपर इट वॉज टेकन एंड राह चलते लोगों के ऊपर ऐसे ब्लो कर दिया था सो वॉट हैपन्स ऑल ऑफ ए सडन यू आर गोन ब्रीथ इन करेक्ट सो दीज बैक्टीरिया इन द पाउडर्ड फॉर्म वॉज इनहेल्ड इन इनहेल्ड बाई दी पीपल एंड these capsules started uh, releasing the exotoxins and the people started you know coughing and dying because of this okay so this is how uh, it became the bacillus anthrax or the anthrax anthrax toxin resulted in the formation of apne suna hi hoga bio weapon karke okay so this is how this is also a terror agar aap goli se nahi maar sakte to aapko fir aise देर वॉज दिस केस ऑल्सो जहाँ पे देर वॉज सम बग ओके मुझे भी वो बग का नाम याद नहीं आ रहा है तो इट वॉज इन साइड दोटो से इन साइड द पर्सन ओके एंड एक तरह से वो अल्ट्रासाउंड जनरेट करता था जिसकी वजह से ह्यूमन्स वेर ऑलवेज थिंकिंग दट समथिंग इज एज ए बजिंग अराउंड ओके एंड दैट वॉज मेकिंग दम इरिटेटेड बट एक्चुअली दो बग्स वे गेटिंग रेप्लीकेटेड इन साइड द बॉडी okay multiplying inside the body and when the person died from all the pores of the uh, that pers particular person these bugs came out flying and infected the other people around so ye bhi ek tarah ka terrorist attack ho jata hai theek hai so that time this bio weapon people were very interested like this is better and uh, agar kal ko aap pakde bhi jaoge like unless until you get caught and all it is difficult to you know what to say aise case dalna कि आप एक बग के वजह से मरे या किसी बैक्टीरियल अटैक के वजह से मरे सिंस गवर्नमेंट नाउ अंडरस्टैंड द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ द साइंस कंट्रीब्यूशन इन दिस इट हैज बीन कंसिडर एज ए बायो वेपन नाउ ठीक है अगर uh, रहा चलते अगर कोई बंदा बैक्टीरियल इन्फेक्शन की वजह से मरता है यू कॉन्ट फाइल अ केस फॉर दैट करेक्ट अभी सिर्फ एक के साथ अगर ऐसे हो बट इफ देर इज अ मास पॉपुलेशन जैसे कि पूरा का पूरा इंडिया गायब या कोई अदर कंट्री गायब हो गया जस्ट बिकॉज ऑफ दिस इन्फेक्शन देन इट कम्स अंडर द कैटेगरी ऑफ बायो वेपन और ऐसे बायो टेररिस्ट 
okay this is not required for the exam and just giving the exam, uh, extra information now the fourth category is the cholesterol dependent cytolysin so there were five if you remember right so now cholesterol dependent cytolysin they are the family of beta barrel pore forming exotoxins secreted by gram positive bacteria ab tak jo humne discuss kiya tha wo gram negative tha bacillus is your gram positive but okay uh, e coli is gram negative so they are secreted as water soluble monomers that when bound to the target cell form a circular homo oligomeric complex containing as many as 40 monomers examples are nemolysins now okay so sorry now look at the structure here if you have got 30% of cholesterol can you see it so in the lipid raft you are going to have the maximum concentration of the cholesterol ab ye cholesterol dependent toxin hai so what is happening so these uh, pneumolysin or this particular toxin will make interactions with the cholesterol see can you see it over here so they are making interactions with the cholesterol so nicely that they get integrated into the host cell if you had 0% cholesterol then it is difficult for this particular pneumolysin to interact and cause any damage to the particular host cell okay so that's why it is called cholesterol dependent Uh, toxin so it can lies and interfere with the function of the cells and soluble molecules of the immune system it will aid in the bacterial during colonization by facilitating the adherence to the host invasion by damaging the host cells but overall what is happening is that what you need to remember is that you need uh, nemolysin to be active only if you have got the cholesterol okay is this part is clear the dependence on the cholesterol this figure is uh, very clear in order to understand yeah everyone akshaya okay now again same thing okay so you have got the lipid raft because there only you have got the maximum of your um, maximum of your cholesterol right now what is happening is that these lipid rafts are present and these molecules of your pneumolysin pl y jo de rakha hai pneumolysin whenever these lipid rafts containing cholesterol are there they come together they form a complex okay and eventually results in the formation of the pore over here now how are uh, how the host is going to repair itself okay ek wo bhi important hai कि अगर आपने पोर तो बना लिया ऑर्गेनिज्म uh, ने टॉक्सिन पोर तो बना लिया हाउ एज ए होस्ट आई एम गोना एस्केप फ्रॉम दिस अटैक समझा अब क्या करेगा होस्ट सी यू सी दैट द स्लोली स्लोली दीज पोर फॉर्मिंग यूनिट्स आर कमिंग टू द प्लाज्मा मेम्ब्रेन दे फॉर्म दी पोर एंड इट इवेंचुअली रिजल्ट इन द लॉस ऑफ द आयोन्स फ्रॉम द साइटोप्लाजम करेक्ट now how i'm going to repair it as a host in order to repair what i can do is jahan jahan pe ye present hai these molecules which results in the formation of the pore what i can do is main utna pinch off karke apne membrane se hi hata dungi samjha so i'm going to remove this much of vesicle so instead of dying only this much part of plasma membrane is being lost which i can recover with the proper nutrition available so instead of killing or instead of getting murdered by these bacterial pore toxins it's better that i pinch off this much part of me and get rid of these pores beautiful right yes samjha Tan uh, shruti tanvi Yes, yeah this is really very simple right now as i mentioned you have got the cell ye bacterial hai and attach 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 yahan pe rahenge so see the size of the protein and the size of the plasma membrane you have to understand abhi mere paas ye agar hai to i'll just pinch off and remove this pinch off and remove this pinch off and remove this okay of course the size is going to get small but it is going to be alive okay so this is how host is protecting itself now the last one small pore forming complex 
So example is gramicidin or gramicidin D. It is a mix of inophoric antibiotics. Okay, example is like gramicidin A, B, C. So which is made up of 80%, 5%, 15%. So ye kya hai? Uh, okay, these are extracted from the brevi uh, bacillus brevis. Uh, they are the linear peptides with 15 amino acids. So, how does it happen that many small, small peptides have been released hai, by the organism? So, these small, small peptides will come together to form the pore. I'll show the uh, structure. Okay. So, this is the structure. Can you see? This is all your peptide structure. Hai, okay. This is your amino acid structures only. What do we see over here is that they are released as a linear peptide and so many it will be released. So these small, small peptides come together. They get integrated into the membrane like this. Okay. They come and they get arranged like this. Eventually resulting in the formation of the pore. Which is loss in water intake. Mein result kar sakta hai. This is one example. Okay. Clear? The mechanism. So they behave like an inophoric substance. They self-associate. Sorry. They self-associate and thus form small pores, which causes the leakage of essential cations from the cytoplasm. So if it is monomeric, it cannot function. Dekho, jab yaha pe present hai, it cannot allow the passage from here. If it is present here, it cannot allow the passage from here. But when they self-associate like this, okay they result in the formation of the pore, which will result in the loss of the ions from the cytoplasm. Yes. Any doubts over here, guys? That's all. So these were the five different types of uh, toxins in which we have discussed about the alpha, beta, uh, binary toxin in which the example was anthrax. Then we have talked about CDC, that is uh, cholesterol dependent cytolysis. And the last one was your uh, small peptide forming the toxins, for example, gramicidin. Okay. Is it clear, guys? Uh, the toxins which is formed. Similarly, the venom which is produced by the snake, they are also peptides, small peptides. Okay, wo aise hi peptides hote jo self assemble ho ke results in the you know loss of the activity, and they are so strong that they go and bind to the pain nerve endings, because of which we feel a very intense pain in our body. Okay, yeah. Anything else? Any doubts, guys? You want to ask Akshaya, Tanvi, Shruti? Uh, ma'am. Hmm. Uh, this gramicidin, when uh, it self-associate, will it be lethal to the cell? Yes. See, if you start losing all the important cations from the cytoplasm, eventually, if it is not being rectified or repaired by the host, then it is going to be lethal to the organism. Correct? So... So it is a matter of chance that uh, whether it exists in monomeric form or the uh, dimer. No, see, not chance event. When an uh, organism is there, it is releasing. As I said before also, they release They release in so many multiple copies. It is just the timing that how far they self-associate and attack the eukaryotic cell or any other target cell. If the eukaryotic or the host cell understands and kick off the, uh, that part of the plasma membrane, then it is going to save itself. It's just how fast the host uh, defend itself or the attacker is fast. Aisa hai. Uh, sabse pehle kya attack kar le ya defend kar le? Is it prescribed by any doctors like for uh, any action of any bacteria or pain? Mm, what the gramicidin? Uh, yes. Uh -huh. Because it is an alpha. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, it is prescribed by the doctors because see, uh, this bacteria is supposed, let us say that we have said Brevi Bacillus Brevis produces gramicidin. So I can use the same thing on the different bacteria to kill. 
right it's not always a whole cell i can kill i can use this antibiotic to kill the other uh, bacteria but won't that be indiscriminate it will also end up killing human cells what what uh, it won't be targeted right it will be killing human cells as well as the bacteria no, no. so right? that was just the example now if i talk about gramicidin okay if i talk about gramicidin it is specific okay guys this is specific against the gram positive bacteria we are not gram positive to wo hame nahi marega okay okay acha so i mean what i meant by the toxin is that these are the five different categories of toxin of of which few are lethal to us for example bacillus anthrax ka toxin is lethal to us now when i talk about gramicidin it is toxin uh, toxic to the gram positive bacteria clear is fine okay anything else so i can then stop here and in the next uh, we can discuss the i'll start with the next topic then okay